So hi, Marcella. Thank you so much for joining us for um, this interview for NeuroAgenda. And it's really good to see you. And we really appreciate your time. So just to fill people in, we are uh, looking to talk to uh, members of our uh, research centre, our Neuroscience Research Centre, and find out a little bit about their journey and um, how they found their career in science so far. And um, we're celebrating uh, women in science. So we have some really amazing uh, women and Marcella is one of them. So welcome Marcella. Um, it's good to see you. So I was wondering Marcella if we could kick off and you could tell us um, a little bit about how you uh, came to be where you are now, your school journey leading into your university uh, and so on to this moment. Okay, so yeah, going back into ancient history then. <laughs> uh, so I always knew I wanted to be a scientist. So that one wasn't a difficult decision to make. So I was basically, I think I spent my entire um, sort of secondary school, high school years waiting to get to uni. Uh, I went to university in Buenos Aires, where I'm from, uh, where I studied uh, biological sciences. So the program over there is a little bit different than what it is here. So it's a very long program and it, it's basically focused in the whole of biology. So I got to study everything from little weird animals to fungi to plants to chemistry, physics and everything. So that was fun. Then I did a PhD also in Buenos Aires where I studied some funky receptors that are in the inner ear uh, that have to do and, uh, with how we actually can control how much we hear. Uh, and I worked on how those receptors evolved. And then um, after I was sort of done with that, I wanted to sort of switch gears and uh, learn a little bit about other topics. And that's when I moved to London uh, on my first postdoc here where I worked with um, Richard Wingate, studying some hindbrain uh, auditory and vestibular nuclei, how they developed and how they evolved. Uh, after that, I studied uh, a bit about uh, midbrain uh, nuclei with Anthony Graham, and then I completely switched topics again uh, to work on what I'm working on now, which is uh, uh, single cell genomics where I'm studying uh, with Matt Graff, also at the Center for Developmental Neurobiology, uh, all the genes that are expressed and how they uh, um, operate on how olfactory uh, 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 neurons in the olfactory bulb um, um, work, basically. Amazing. So, and you're, you're just about to embark on uh, a fellowship? Well, yes. So, because... <laughs> I am uh, what's called a research fellow, so I'm sort of an old, old postdoc, uh, and I've been uh, applying for jobs and searching around to try to make that difficult jump to um, sort of get in my independent uh, research career. So luckily, I, I got a fellowship uh, last year now, because we're in 2021 now, um, to join the EAR Institute uh, to start uh, at UCL to start my own research group where I'm going to be uh, studying how uh, hair cells in the inner ear actually uh, can regenerate. Amazing. So you're just about to kind of take that next step from being a postdoc through to mm -hmm. having your own group. How many people will you be having working in your lab, Marcella? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> So it de depends on funding because um, uh, in, in academia, everything depends on funding, but it's something around two to three people. So okay. to get a postdoc, a tech, PhD students, mm. and any student who wants to join, basically. Sure, amazing. I would love to be in your lab. <laughs> I think it'd be a lot Come on over. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So um, I just want to ask you one really quick question about what the journey you just said. How was it moving between countries? Because that's quite a big move coming from Buenos Aires to London. How did you find that? To be honest, uh, I loved it. Mm. <laughs> I loved it. And, and yeah, I was super looking forward to it. Um, and when I was starting basically shopping around for uh, potential places to move, I just chose London. So I wanted to move to London and that was the goal. Um, coming from Buenos Aires, I also have a lot of friends that made the same move. 
So it's a very different experience for everybody, <laughs> to mm. be honest. I have loads of friends that had a really tough time, stayed here or somewhere else in Europe or in the US for two years and then went back. Loads of friends that stayed over for seven years, eight years, and now are back. Mm. Um, I, I actually, I just, I wanted the challenge. I wanted the experience. I wanted the move. I wanted the new things, the, mm. I loved it. <laughs> Great. That's one of the advantages of science. I always think that it is so global if you want to go yeah. around the world outside of yeah. COVID times. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. Because right now it's super global, but it, it, everything happens on the same yeah. screen. <laughs> yeah, sure. I know. Um, so, Marcella, what would you say is, what do you like most about your job? <laughs> uh, well, the travelling was a good <laughs> thing. <laughs> now, uh, no, seriously. Um, the space to think i think that's my that's sort of my favorite thing the actual space and the chance to sit down and read down about anything and say okay fine how can this actually push me towards answering that question or that other question the 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 fact that we are constantly encouraged to learn new things so it's always something new it's never boring so you Every, every single day is super different from next. Every single day you're thinking about, oh, I should change my experiment this way. Or maybe what this result means is that other way. It's just the, the fact that our goal is actually to nurture that curiosity, to, to keep thinking, to keep asking, to keep doubting, to, to keep reading, to keep writing. And yeah. That's amazing. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I'm really I mean, a curious that's, person. <laughs> that's a great thing. So science is definitely a job for you, Marcella. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. think it is. Yeah. So what? So okay. What have you found the most? What would you say have you found the most challenging um, thing in your journey so far to where you are today? Well, okay. Um, so there are challenges and challenges. Yeah. There are challenges that. I think from, from sort of a researcher scientist point of view, we welcome it. It's like, I want the challenge. I want, I want to learn the stuff that is super hard and I can't think it through. It's like, what's that mean? I, that I like, and I, I bring it on, mm. definitely. The, the other, the, the challenges that are sort of a little bit more out of, out of our, our control are the ones that are not related to the sort of the job description per se, which are things that have to do with job stability, with funding, with moving countries, with where, uh, um, where am I going to find my next uh, job and stuff like that. So uh, uh, everyone is probably quite aware that when you go into science, there's sort of a neatly uh, drawn up uh, um, sort of a walk map mm. uh, route that you go to uni, you get your degree, then you probably do a master's, then you go do a PhD and things sort of look straightforward up to that point and then you finish your PhD and you think oh I want to stay in academia I really like this this is really for me which was the case for me I never doubted that I oh I mean I want to find another job somewhere else mm. but then and then you go okay I'll get a postdoc I'll do a postdoc you're super into the research you're super into the questions writing your papers and everything and then you go do another postdoc and then then you are in a, a ball is rolling where postdoctoral contracts are, contracts are short and so your job stability is actually tied to contracts that are finishing in a year in six months and the next step is harder so I think that the most difficult thing and that's probably because it's that one thing that I just went through that's yeah. what I just sold is that is job stability is actually having the peace of mind that you're not going to be <laughs> out mm. of a very in three months mm. um, and happy with your actual job but without a job <laughs> yes yes i understand sure yeah i know that's that's extremely challenging i think for for scientists at, especially at postdoc level um yeah. so um i guess my final question for you is um and this is i guess part of the reason we're here is this mm. celebration and, and exploring mm. the feet you know the women in science and, and, women, and women's journey is, do you, can you think of any positive actions that could be taken to increase female representation, especially at 
senior levels and leadership levels in science? Uh, I know that's a big question, but <laughs> it is a big question. And and, yeah. and um, we, we when we were talking previously uh, uh, before this, I've been thinking about this mm. quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that in 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 many many ways we are heading in the right direction. There's a mm. lot of there's a lot of positive stuff uh, mm. going on, and I think that especially at sort of uni, PhD, and even postdoc. So mm. the presentation is, it's very much there. I and mean, if, if, if you go to the center, so the CDN, there's what, probably about 45, 50 postdocs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and if you go, go, go see gender representation, that, has, that is actually quite, it's actually quite okay. And as mm. clearly said, so the problem becomes more of a problem. So the further uh, ahead, uh, you go on the on basically on career progression mm. and I am optimistic that it's a matter of time that I think that the positive actions that have been taken already are going to filter through but I do think that there is a requirement for sort of an encouragement from from a mentoring point of view from a uh, from a yes you can point of view from sort of go for it because i've noticed going through all the sort of ups and downs of uh, trying applying for uh, 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 getting an independent job mm -hmm. that a lot of the energy that you need to keep going has to come from you but you have to get it from somewhere and you have to basically you have to say okay fine i'm gonna apply again i'm gonna apply again because because it's a cruel system in a way because there's Loads of us. There's not that many jobs. There's uh, we all we all want to get there, uh, and you have to find the right place for you. So I think that encouragement from 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 your um, environment, from your immediate colleagues, from your mentors, from your from your um, I don't know, from your lab mates, from everyone. Uh, I think it's important because there is one thing that we have to face is that we women actually put into doubt a lot more things than men do so what whenever i'm thinking oh am i going to be able to do this because it's a big job and so am i going to be able to actually do it properly and stuff so we doubt that a lot more uh, and so it is good that uh, we are encouraged from outside and from within so keep telling us go for it go for it and then there's the sort of the uh, straightforward uh, changes to the system that have to happen where, I don't know, senior management and stuff like that have to actually acknowledge that uh, whether there is or there is not a bias, whether there is or there is not enough uh, uh, assistance and, and, and backup and programs that make, make the obvious uh, challenges on career progression uh, actually not gender biased mm. and stuff. That. So, but I do think we're moving in the right direction, and mm. and things like this are a good example of, of, of what yeah. was. Sure, amazing. That's a really great answer, Marcella, and you covered a lot of bases there. So, well done. <laughs> really interesting, and it's it's so great to hear your journey. And um, I'm going to bring the interview to a close, and I'm going to say good luck with thank the next you. steps, and thank you so much for um, sharing your experience with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marcella.